Hello, we're the History Hikers. I'm Dries. And I'm Jente. Right now we're at Chateau de Giersberg, but behind us is the Chateau de Saint Ulrich, which we're checking out next. And we are taking you along to this most magnificent of the three castles of Ribovillet. Let's go! We've been anxiously waiting to show you this castle, as it is one of our all-time favorites. Located a stone's throw away from Giersberg Castle, which we visited last week, it was the main residence of the powerful lords of Ribopierre, or Rappelstein in German. Everything here reflects the might and grand ambitions of its owners. The earliest construction dates to the 12th century when a first castle was built with donjon and dwelling. The current entrance, consisting of several gates and a barbican, were built during the 15th century to beef up the castle defences. From here we can enter the lower level to what must be the most eye-catching room of the castle, Le Salle des Chevaliers, or the Knight's Hall. It consisted of two levels. The stone supports in the walls show the level of the second floor. This floor of the Grand Hall is decorated with nine twin windows with seats, each adorned with a beautiful oculus. Each oculus has a different pattern, which makes for beautiful patterns lighting up the room. Imagine the noble lords and ladies who walk these very halls, their footsteps echoing through the centuries. During the 13th century, the lords of Ribopierre not only completely rebuilt the old castle, but also enlarged it significantly, adding among others the Salle des Chevaliers and a new keep at the opposite end of the castle, which served as living quarters for the lord. It withstood two sieges around that time, and was obviously too mighty to conquer as both sieges were abandoned after only a few days. At about the same height as the second level of the Salle des Chevaliers, we enter what used to be the Castle Chapel. It was dedicated to saint Ulrich, which is where the current name is derived from. It was only during the 15th century, however, that the name saint Ulrich was used. It too is adorned with a fantastic twin window with seats.
A large lower courtyard was added to the western end of the castle to provide additional protection to this side. It held several buildings and a postern gate. Though a document states that in 1518 about 200 people lived and worked around the castle, not long after that it was gradually abandoned. The Ribopierre family favored a Renaissance-style castle in the center of town, down in the valley. A shame in our eyes. Even during the abandonment of the castle, the chapel would remain to be serviced by a priest until the entirety of the castle was deserted during the Thirty Years' War. We end our tour by making our way through the oldest part of the castle, the original 12th century residence and keep. From up here you have a stunning view over the castles of St. Ulrich and Giersberg, the Alsace Valley and the hills higher up where our next destination lies. Until next week! Absolutely stunning. Time for the arbitrary subjective castle score. Me first. Me first? Well, I don't think I have to go first. I think this is a unanimous 10. It's a unanimous 10. This is such an intricately carved complex of rooms and corridors riddled with beautiful views. It's amazing. Leave your score in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. And like, comment, subscribe and all that good YouTube stuff if you want to see more of these kind of castles. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.